it's important to understand that you know all roads will eventually kind of lead to futureverse. Actually, let's re let's recharacterize it. All questions lead to futureverse, and they are coming up with answers to address that. You guys have had the merch drop that came out and it said that the mint was going to stop on it on the 14th, but now we're a few days uh, beyond that. So what's the deal with the merch? What do we need to know? So the only thing that's changed uh, is that we've extended the mint. Um, the idea all, all along was that you would be able to get it through Root initially, and then it would always be available in our store because one of the things that we take pride in is developing the store that blends web two and web three commerce and functionality. So we've always had a token gated store where people can connect their wallets, get tiered discounts um, and get access to exclusive merch. So we always knew that that would be a part of the fluff merch drop. Um, but the kind of the big innovation here, the headline was that you'd be able to purchase in route. So that was the initial mint offering. And as, as stated, the only thing that changed was whereas the Initial mint offering was only going to be open for a couple of weeks. We've now extended it to a full month. And so with the with the extension of that, does that mean anything like in specific with it going out? So that just essentially means that if you're still wanting to buy merch within Root, you're able to. And I'm I'm trying to recall back, and Trevor, I think you were on a spaces with Max, or maybe it was Bildo, where you were kind of going through, you know, there was some hiccups on certain things, and the Shopify is now changing the way that they're integrating with crypto. It sounds so it sounded like it was kind of convoluted, not just the simple, hey, plug and play uh situation. Yeah, 100 percent Um you know, I mean, that's the nature of Web3, right? Everything's kind of a work in progress, you know, and you you iterate and improve. And as you roll things out, things break. And, and, and that's part of the fun of what we're doing. Uh, so, yeah, we, we had a few things along the way like that. Uh, we, we, we had built a fully operable app and then Shopify changed the rules on us and we had to go back to the drawing board and rebuild a few things. And, and that's still very much a work in progress. So uh, we, uh, yeah, we, we, we're getting there <laughs> uh, and the technology is definitely there. So we'll be rolling out the, the products on the drx.store for those who want to purchase in Fiat uh, probably by the time this thing goes live. Uh, and, uh, and, and so we wanted to, as Arlo points out, give people the opportunity to choose now. So we, we, we made the call to extend the mint. So if you, you want to buy using Fiat, using your credit card, you can do that through the store. If you want to buy with Root, you can still do that for, for another, what is it, couple of weeks, Arlo? Something that kind of brings those two ideas together and gives you a peek kind of behind the curtain a little bit. But the, the, the main idea, the original idea was that you'd be able to do it all in one place, that you would be able to go on to our store, either buy it in Root or buy it in Fiat. Um, but the technology is not there yet. All, as Trevor said, all this technology is stuff that we have to innovate ourselves. So some proves to be more difficult than others. And so then you just have to figure out what's a way to get a step forward. And so that's what we've got right now. Um, and one more note about extending the mint is normally that's not something that we would do or that you would do in Web3 because usually you're trying to pr protect, you know, rarity or exclusivity or early access, things like that. But in this case, there is no limited supply. There is no rarity. So we, we didn't really see any harm in extending the mint a little longer. We were just trying to make sure that people that wanted it would be able to get access to it. And as we rolled out the products in our store, we wanted there to be some overlap. Well, I, th I think with merch in general, it's definitely a whole nother beast because I mean, traditionally for these NFTs, it's kind of, you know, simplistic, hey, buying, and selling, and trading, but I, I don't think we've adopted that, you know, inside the metaverse, uh, digital clothing as of yet. Again, we're working on that getting closer and closer every single day, but what I've heard from some people and shout out to Dowser uh, from the Futureverse community actually was uh, down near me. And so we I got to meet in person and he was just talking generally about how, you know, he's had some friends and whatnot that got into merchandise or they have a big brand and they're trying to get into, you know, just selling merch and they've found it to be a hell of an experience. And it's really about how, you know, and all this other stuff. So can you guys, whether it's Trev or Arlo, talk a little bit about how you guys set up the suppliers for it? Is it simply you guys yourself or what did that process look like when setting everything up? 
Trevor, I will let you take it. I'm just going to ask for one point of clarification. Are you talking about the physical merch or the digital merch or all of it? For the physical, but now that you bring up the digital, you're right. We should be talking about the digital too. So, so yeah, absolutely. Pipeline. Right. They both have their own pipelines. Yep. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so look, we we probably, like Dowser, uh, we, we, we went through a whole lot of um, R&D early on. Uh, when we started this brand, we looked at a lot of different models. We, we, we contemplated very seriously the idea of drop shipping uh, and, and print on demand. Um, that made a lot of sense on, on the surface because, uh, you know, in this, in this Web3 space, there was a lot of call in the early days. People wanted to rock their NFTs on, on merch, right? So the idea that you could just, you know, connect to some kind of back end, drop your, your NFT graphics onto some kind of merch products and then have it printed and shipped out. Um, was really, really popular and 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 in demand. And so that was the original thesis. We were going to go down that road. Um, but what we soon discovered was there was a couple of really big um, problems for us with that, not the least of which is there's already a lot of companies out there that you can do that, right? Most of these most of the NFT companies, you can get your artwork uh, from from the NFT in a high res format, and you can go on to one of these big print on demand type services and and do whatever you want with it. Uh, so we didn't really want to compete against those guys. Um, and the, but the big one for us was the the, the loss of control over quality. Uh, so, you know, um, I, I'm sure that we can all think back to a few of the not so salubrious merch drops that have happened from some of the big Web3 brands that have hap- that have come along the way. Uh, and that is one of the things that we wanted to make sure we avoided. We we wanted to promise the idea that what you see in the digital is also what you get in the physical and the the, the, the quality is really high. And so in that vein, we then went in and invested quite heavily and spent a lot of time and money moving through and burning through different manufacturers to find the right people to make our goods. So now we have a range of facilities, mostly in Indonesia. Uh, We have a guy on the ground, one um, uh, one of our team members, shout out to Don, is on the ground down there. Uh, in the factories, and uh, he's able to get in there, and, and we've got that really hands-on approach. We can, we can, uh, you know, we can influence the entire process from, you know, and, and we don't use any blanks or, or anything like that. So everything we produce is custom-made now, uh, and all goes through those um, those factories that we've sort of tried and tested for for quality and and, and assurance. And you know, the onesie was probably our. It looks uh, really good. Our- like, is that is that fully stitched and everything with the logo? Because yeah, I, yeah, I thought yeah. it's. <laughs> so these are uh, these are embroidered. There's a huge amazing. On the back. Well, yeah, and so we went through. I mean, this is this is an, an enormous undertaking, right? To to for Arlo to draw this, and then for someone to go and have to make it physically and make it look as good and 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 of the quality that it is, that was a lot of work. You know, we went through a number of suppliers. I mean, even just getting embroidered patches, we went through. I think about four different providers before we found the guys that we now use that did it to a really really high standard. Uh, so. I think the baptism of fire for us was the onesie project. Um, by the time we got through this, we had some great supplies in mind. I mean, this is custom fabric that's printed from scratch and all of that sort of stuff. So, you know, we, we yeah, we now have our own network and we're leveraging that network now for other brands. So Futureverse merch is, is one of the first iterations of that. We're also working with another Web3 project at the moment to build their merch out. So we're starting to build a pipeline and offer that as a service to other projects. So Dowser, if you're still keen, mate, um, hit us up. We'll, uh, we'll we'll be able to take care of you. So I want to get into the digital implementation here in just a moment. But when you are, are talking about how you sourced all these things and went through significant effort, and it was specifically for the DRX merch initially, but then for this merch drop, it's coming through like the Futureverse lens more specifically. Can you talk about what your guys' relationship is with Futureverse for anybody that might not know? Yes. So let let me add a little bit of background to it also, because we are a part of the Futureverse ecosystem um, and we always have been. So Drug Receipt started as a project with me and Brooke Howard Smith, who was one of the original founders of NFL, which became Futureverse. Um, It's a bit oversimplified, but it sort of gives you enough information to provide some context and background here. But so Brooke and I partnered on a company 30 years ago um, in the action sports industry. It was a rollerblading accessories and apparel company called Synod. It was the biggest brand in that burgeoning action sport. Um, and we were really successful with that company. For, Brooke and I were best friends for a long time. We, uh, He's from New Zealand, I'm from Texas, but we met in Southern California and spent a lot of time out there sort of building this new action sports industry. We were part of the first X Games, 
Um, we were part of the first uh, world championships for rollerblading. Um, but so when we talk about um, building these supply chains in um, physical apparel, uh, we also had a little bit of a head start in that Brooke and I have a background in uh, merchandise and apparel. And I've been with several companies since then uh, doing the same type of thing. So we had a not as steep of a learning curve because we knew sort of the ins and outs of the industry. Finding the right manufacturers is a different ballgame. You still always have to do your due diligence. But we kind of knew the right questions to ask. We, we knew the right places to go. We knew how to put together tech packs. It's like we didn't have to reinvent the wheel. Um, and which is why, as a part of the Futureverse, which has vast resources, and they know their way around the Web3 space and technology and 3D modeling and everything else that they do, all the, all the innovative stuff that they're doing. But when it comes to merchandising and physical uh, goods and apparel, that's a different beast. You kind of have to know what you're doing. And so that's why they came to us as part of their environment, but people that they knew had experience in this space and ask them to help get their uh, get this merch release out, which is what we've done for them. Because it's something that people have been waiting for and asking for for years since the inception of the project. Um, and so now we're happy to help finally make it reality. Well, I, I wonder, Trevor, I don't know, could you add to that at all? Because that was great points from Arlo, and it's really just making me think of the Futureverse and them saying, hey, we've kind of built all of these different companies, but also brought them under one roof. And I think from somebody who's really not behind the scenes, you know, trying to consume everything, connect the dots and all that, we're seeing all these different teams that are really getting down into, you know, on, on the streets, as you were saying, for uh, Dom or Dawn, and it's, you know... It's wild to watch, but also I don't know if we can comprehend the amount of depth that's a part of what Featureverse is. Yeah, um, it's a it's interesting because you know it's it's that old uh, meme of the iceberg, right, where you see the, the the tip and it looks shiny and the sun glistens off it and everybody is attracted by the shining light and it looks impressive, but what you don't see is what's going on underneath the surface and. Uh, and I know that, you know, our small part in it, and, and I'm fortunate enough to have, I guess, a little bit of a deeper insight being close to Aaron and uh, and the team at Futureverse. Uh, you know, I, I get a little bit more of, I guess, insight into what's going on there. And I can tell you that, you know, the amount of effort and work that goes into uh, what you guys see on the surface is really mind blowing. Um, you know, there's some incredibly talented people in there. And and I always, uh, you know, I, I say to Aaron and, 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 uh, and Jeff, you know, rebuilding the internet is hard, right? It's, it's really hard. And we, we end up with all of these issues. I mean, just for us, for an example, from, from the DRX side, you know, there was no technology to, to deliver digital and physical products. You know, that just didn't exist. It was one or the other. And you, you would have seen uh, in, the, in the earlier days or before we built our tech that, you know, people were selling merch in a traditional sense and trying their best to kind of connect it with this digital idea of, of, of NFTs and, and, and Web3 gaming and all of those sorts of IPs that were coming out, but there was no system that could do it. And so we, as a streetwear brand went, well, we're going to have to build it, right? And if we want to do this, then we're going to have to build that. So suddenly we're now have this sort of technology arm of drug receipts that we call DRX, which is building out, you know, e-commerce technology in partnership with Futureverse. And, you know, it, 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 so that gives you an understanding of just how quickly we have to adapt and grow as an ecosystem. So, you know, the, the, the team are working really um, hard on this idea of swappable so that we can make the digital wearables a, a reality, right? Well, th that's an enormous problem. I mean, I remember back in the day when we first started talking about drug receipts, we did the first drop, we started talking about digital products. We all were like, yeah, we're going to do digital wearables and you'll be able to rock around the metaverse. And it just fell out of your mouth like it was no big deal. And then when you actually realize holy shit that's a that's a near impossible thing to achieve uh and it's only been with things like the the development of generative ai and the technology that asm are building and you know the the, the pieces of this jigsaw that kind of puzzle together that we've been able to achieve it right if it wasn't for that we'd still be selling a promise and now we're actually delivering on that promise so uh yeah so it's important to understand that you know all roads will eventually kind of lead to futureverse in my in my opinion they're building that interoperability layer that will enable these experiences to happen. Uh, and so while you see the shiny stuff, the, the, the Readyverse, you see Gen AI, you see, you know, drug receipts in our e-commerce technology, and you see all these bits and pieces on the surface, 
what's happening underneath is that this is all coming together and starting to run as, as one big bad engine. And the onboarding of some of these other brands that are coming into the space that people are getting excited about is indicative of that, right? So the other brands in Web3 are starting to go, ah, these guys are figuring it out and we need to jump on board with that. So it's really exciting. All roads lead to future verse. You guys need to take that quote, slap it on a shirt. That's going to be a bestseller. And that, that's, <laughs> that, was, that was a great line right there. Absolutely love it. Holy smoke. So, I mean, Trevor, you, you kind of talk and you had the, you know, the essence of being a little bit closer to the team where you're like, okay, there's, you know, some exciting things going on. And we'll get a little bit more into that. And I'm so, we're still going to touch on digital wearables. But for Arlo, when, you know, you started this drug receipts aspect and you were friends with Brooke and a lot of people remember Brooke uh, as he was a part of Featureverse as well. And he's not as kind of front facing with Futureverse anymore, but I mean, as Trevor just put it, all roads lead to Futureverse, and now you're kind of a part of something special. Was there any kind of point of you guys doing something specific with drug receipts? Maybe it was even this merch drop where you're like, hey, this is, we have the potential to really kind of start, you know, upping our game because more and more eyes are going to be coming on us. Yeah, we've known that all along. I mean, be, we've been a part of Futureverse since its inception. So we've always been aware of kind of like, potential right that the ceiling the bar has always been set high and we've always aimed for it i mean we've always tried to push technology push the limits of our offerings and try to conceive of um you know how we can push uh the technology forward and offer something novel and of value to the space um because futureverse really does um cover and offer so much it really took a little bit of thinking initially to find our lane. I mean, the, the raw ingredients and elements were there, but just figuring out how to articulate it and really understand what it was and then be able to see the path forward um, took a little bit of work. But once we saw it and committed to it, yeah, I think that it's been really fruitful. And now it's a rot, it's, it has landed us at a place where, as you say, yes, we have an opportunity to show a wider audience all the stuff that we've been working on for the past three years. Um, because we did, it's not like just all of a sudden Futureverse said, hey, do you guys want to do our, do our t-shirts? And we're like, oh, let's do a store. Let's do Web3 Commerce. Let's do token gating. We've been building that stuff, you know, all along in the background. Our community is aware of it, but now we get to share it with the wider ecosystem. Well, Trevor, I know that on the one spaces you were talking kind of about like the, the problems that you guys had, but you know, Arlo talking now again about like, Hey, we've done all this stuff and like are close knit people have seen it, but now it's going to be the bigger audience. But it, it takes me back to just the broad web three landscape that I think people vastly underestimate. And I, I caught myself kind of realizing this, that this stuff takes time. It is, as you were saying earlier, the recreation of the internet. And I'm just curious as someone who's gone through a lot of headaches that you can't really say, you know, publicly of, hey, this went wrong or this didn't work or this went sideways and you kind of have to hold it back and people don't get to see that full picture, even though we scream about transparency and whatnot. Do you have kind of just any notions for people out there that don't get to see the behind the scenes of how hard this actually is? Yeah, I mean, well, you, you've now done a drop, right? So you, you, you've you learned what, what goes into um, building up to and leading to, to something like this. Um, yeah, you know, I think one of the one of the things that people don't realize is when you conceive something in your mind based on the information that you have at hand, you, you're really basing a Web3 decision on a Web2 reality. And when you move into Web3, you suddenly start to realize that none of this stuff exists. Everything's everything's being built. And when everything's just being built, you know, we're we're leveraging brand new technology. I mean, as we were building out this merch drop and as we were literally uh, doing the digital products and, and working with the Futureverse team on the designs and creating the digitals and getting them wearable, suddenly the swappables technology got to a point where we could take advantage of that. And so that changed everything, right? Like, so prior to that happening, we weren't planning on having that as part of the drop. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, hang on, we're about to deliver this and that and, and this can be a showcase of how we deliver that. And we're like, okay, well, then we bump the merch drop a little bit longer and we wait for that to finish. Then we've got to go through testing and everything. And then as we were doing that, something else comes out and they're like, oh, now we're going to do it right then. So, so, and eventually you've got to go, no, that's it. Draw a line in the sand, you know, because it could never end, right? You know, in, in two months time, there'll be some other feature and people will be screaming, why didn't you do that with your merch drop? We'll be like, because we, we can't do everything. You've been waiting at some point, we've got to draw a line in the sand. 
so yeah, I mean, you know, the, the the challenges are there, and then and then there's all the usual businesses business challenges. I mean, we lost our key developer right at the eleventh hour. Uh, you know, they 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 left the uh, the project, and we had to suddenly find and train and rebuild a whole new developer who's never seen the root network before, never tried to build on that framework. This is all brand new. That tech. sounds absolutely and, nightmarish. Oh, a three developer coming in who's who's Ethereum based and has experience in in, in uh, smart contracts on the Ethereum network. And they come in and start looking at the root network and going, well, hang on, this is nothing, you know, it's similar, it's EVM, but it's not the same. And now they've got to relearn everything. And so what should have taken, you know, maybe a few weeks has now taken a couple of months because we've got to bring a whole new developer up to speed. So that, that's a very traditional problem, right? Any business could relate to that where you've got people that are moving and, and coming and going and you've got to train new staff. But when you're doing that, plus everything's brand new and being built on the fly and not everything works perfectly yet, you've got these compounding issues that you've got to overcome. So whenever I see somebody deliver something like what we've just done or, or, or some of the, the feature updates that you see from Futureverse coming out and other projects in, in Web3, I'm always like, man, I can only imagine the sorts of things that those guys had to overcome to make that possible. And, uh, and, and most of that just goes unnoticed, you know? And so I encourage all of you out there that are watching this, that are in the Web3 greater community, to rein back your fud a little bit because you don't know what's going on behind the scenes and how much effort and work and challenges that are being overcome. You might see one little piece of it and go, oh, why didn't that happen? Or this isn't good enough. But you haven't seen all of the other stuff that's gone to get to, to that point. So uh, so always, you know, hold your beer and uh, and just let these guys do their job because they're smart people and they're working really hard to, to build these experiences. Well, I, I think there's also not really any AI tooling. We talk all about AI, but obviously with X, there's Grok, there's ChatGPT that people are starting to integrate, but Futureverse has highlighted, hey, we're trying to build some of these AI tooling, and I think it's going to be really exciting to see what that happens. But now finally to our <laughs> talk about the digital wearables, Arlo, how impactful do you think that that's going to be for people being able to dress however they want in the metaverse? And I don't mean just necessarily for uh, the Futureverse merch drop or anything else you were doing. I'm just meaning on kind of like a global scale. We have all of these, you know, is it a narrative? Is it hyperbole? But saying people are going to care more about what they look like digitally than they do physically. How much weight do you put into that conversation? Well, when you look at the analogs, I mean, if you look at analog existence, for instance, but if you look at video games, I mean, it, one of the first things that you get in any of these environments, whether it's the analog world or it's video game environments, is the ability to customize your characters, your avatars, your appearance in these things. Because, yeah, we are vain creatures, but we also care about self-expression. We want to be unique and identifiable, and we care about our appearance. And so the metaverse is not only is it not going to be not any different than any of those others, but it's probably going to be more than all of the others um, as people are spending more and more of their time in those kinds of environments. And it probably remains to be seen what that will look like, whether we're in games or whether we are socializing and in lounges or things like that, uh, what avatars will even mean in that space. But in, to some degree or another, we are going to be occupying these new spaces. And yes, absolutely. What's true in the rest of our lives will be true in the metaverse and people will want to express themselves. And so typically, historically, how we do that is through dressing your avatars. Um, and so there, there's good reason why people have such high projections for the apparel industry in Web3. Um, and, you know, with Futureverse and drug receipts, we are just trying to do our part to kind of bridge the gap from where we are now to getting into that brave new world. Amazing. And I'm, I'm trying to think for myself, the only, the only other kind of like digital wearables that I can think of from web three was that for Yugen and board apes, they gave out like Decentraland hoodies of like the original BAYC one. And obviously, oh, unfortunately it seems like Decentraland's not as front facing as it once was. And everybody was super excited about it, but for open ready verse, everything else that's going on here in these other metaverses, do you think that, you know, when you guys have these digital merch, merch that it's just going to be interoperable and easy, or do we have to, focus on the fact of like the the ready verse standard as Ernest Klein talked about at South by Southwest how does that work is that where all roads lead to Futureverse or how does the interoperability discussion kind of integrate with what Futureverse is doing well when you say so all roads lead to Futureverse actually let's re let's recharacterize it all questions lead to Futureverse and they are coming up with answers to address that so the interoperability 
as Trevor discussed, you know, the, the, the problem of digital wearables is not just how do you get your graphics on a 3D rendering, it's how do you get that 3D model to fit on avatars of all different shapes and sizes across all different platforms. Um, when we did our first drop, it was basically one 3D rendering with an IOU. It says, as this becomes uh, available in different environments, we will make sure that we get you, uh, you know, a proxy or a, uh, a 3D rendering that will fit in that environment or a digital wearable that will fit in, fit in that environment. And again, we weren't aware at the time that there would be a solution that was more efficient, more elegant than us having to recreate a different model for each one of those environments. Futureverse has come up with basically something that can instantly scale your wearable to any avatar. Um, and so those kinds of solutions, which are coming from super uh, from Futureverse, will go a long way toward answering uh, those problems and those challenges. You are now able to go live to the drx.store and grab the Futureverse merch using Fiat, pay with whatever currency you want to pay with and have it shipped all over the world. And we will uh, distribute the digital wearables that go with your uh, physical products straight into your FuturePass wallet. Uh, and the other thing that we want to announce while we're here is that we're also running a competition to win uh, some party bears. We've got some other wearables available and some other prizes on offer. So keep an eye on the drug receipts uh, uh, X page and our social media, or just jump into our Discord and follow our announcements channel for more information about that. But that's a competition that'll be dropping very soon and may even be live by the time this podcast goes out. Uh, but we're, yeah, we're, we're encouraging people to use the digital wearable component of our drop, dress your party bears, share your favorite content, go as crazy as you like, and we'll be, uh, rewarding our favorites with uh, some some prizes, including party bears and other NFTs from the Futureverse ecosystem. So get amongst it, show us what you've got. We're looking forward to seeing how you guys dress your bears to impress. So we're calling the competition Naked is Boring. Fire. <laughs> Arlo, any, any final thoughts you want to leave us with her? Yeah, so we've addressed two of the the prongs of our, our three-headed monster, two of the two of the heads. The third is augmented reality, and it is one of our, you know, one of our marquee features. Um, so I think we would it would be a big mistake if we didn't mention it here. But we haven't unveiled the the augmented reality aspect for the Futureverse merch shop, but we are actively in development for that. But for anyone who goes on to our store um, seeking out the Futureverse merch, you will see that all of our other products are on there as well. So we encourage you to check those out. They're great. Uh, cool products, both for physical um, merchandise, but also there's digital components to all the pieces as well. And all of our merch has augmented reality experiences built into it. And from our store, you can go in, um, each product has prog product images. And one of those product images includes a video that will show you the augmented reality in action. Um, so just by going onto our store, drx.store, you can look at the product images. You'll see uh, images of the, the corresponding digital pieces. You'll see them rotating in 3D. You can see animations of people actually walking around with the augmented reality activated. Um, the augmented reality, as we talk about this story of kind of bringing um, Web3 to streetwear and streetwear to Web3, but one of the, the, one of the critical pieces to it, one of the things that we had found uh, really helps in terms of bringing eyeballs and selling the story of something cool is afoot. Um, there is this interesting integration of um, Web3 and the analog world. Uh, but when you see your merchandise come to life uh, in, in real uh, analog environments, it just blows people's minds. So I encourage you all to check out um, our augmented reality experiences, DR experience, DR experience. Um, that's right, right? Yeah, VR experience, yeah. <laughs> VR experience. Uh, you can and see it at vrx.store, but it, it's an important part of our story. So I want to make sure we covered it. And for the hundreds of people that have already bought the Futureverse merch, that's a promise that you can you can uh, lean into. It's coming uh, when, by the time you get your hands on the physical products, uh, we will unveil the uh, augmented reality experience that we're we're building for Futureverse at the moment. It's pretty exciting. We're 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 stoked to to share that with everyone. And finally, not to get too far ahead of myself or anything like that, but is there any intention for having future Futureverse merch, merch drops or? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, so this is the first of many. Um, 
You know, it's interesting because when this started way back when we first started talking with Futureverse about doing the merch drop, it was really going to be just a fluff drop. And I think, Arlo, you had a little uh, uh, fruity and slip a moment ago and mentioned it as the fluff merch drop. Yeah, I... <laughs> we talked about it as the yeah, fluff merch funny. drop for so long. Yeah. Uh, but it, it it then grew because of the opportunities that came about. And we understood that we were going to be able to showcase the the, the swappables experience. Uh, so we we moved it um, with Shara and Aaron's input. We moved it from a purely fluff focused drop into a broader futureverse focused drop. Um, it felt like that was the right thing to do out of the gate. Like the first products that come from the futureverse ecosystem uh, is futureverse facing. Uh, but it's the first of many. So we are about to build and go into, I won't tell you which project's coming next, but we're going to be building products across all of the Futureverse IP uh, and building products for all of the communities. And not all of them will be t-shirts, hats and hoodies and traditional kind of streetwear. Uh, we've got some pretty cool uh, surprises already in the pipeline. So keep an eye on it, but we're we're um, underway now. So we've got the first one out the gate and there'll be plenty more coming where that came from. So yeah, we're excited to be doing that. And if you have a Web3 project out there or even uh, just a, a regular old business and you're looking for someone to build uh, some, some really cool merch and some products that are both physical and digital, have an augmented reality component, then we're also working with other brands as well. So we're not purely just the wardrobe section for Futureverse. We're also uh, where we like to think of ourselves as the wardrobe section for Web3 uh, because of the, the fact that we can create digital, physical and augmented reality to, to, to kind of mash it all together. Thank you guys so much for joining in. And of course, if you guys are watching right now and you want to pick up some merch, be sure to go over to the site.